person to follow a passionate leader that they believe is real. Uh, that person is follow a fearless leader that they believe is courageous and brave. Mm. You understand me? Uh, people will follow a leader that they respect. So, you know, your principles are your first level of capital. Okay. You understand me? Because that's why a person will follow you. Okay. You understand? Your intellect can be your capital. This person is so smart. I will, f I will work for you for free because I believe in you. Right. Right. Confidence is a level of capital. Right, because that's what you gonna use to get money anyway. Exactly. Now, in this day and age, there's no reason for a person to be broke, right? Because that means that you can't tell me you a god and you don't know how to get a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. right? There's so many ways to make money today. You know, you can't say that you are a light bearer and a light bringer, yet you ain't got no work and you ain't got no motion, right? Today is about the time of execution. For sure. So you gotta show me today. What up, world? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cosign Conversations podcast. This is actually a Cosign cover story. We're here in Dallas, Green Room, uh, the Majestic Theater, here with a, a global thought leader, a change maker, a disruptor, here with the God, the King, 19 Keys. How you yeah, doing? Blessing to be here, my brother. Man, man, this is, this is one of those moments where it's like one of those career-defining moments. We've interviewed a lot of people, right? But it's like, at this point in your career, in your journey, I feel like, you're that guy, right? Man, so to be able that. to have this conversation with you and just talk to you and, you know, kind of hear your story and your thoughts on stuff at this point is, is going to be a great conversation. I appreciate yes, you taking right. the time for it. hundred percent. Appreciate y'all pulling up. Man, so uh, I kind of want to start this conversation because it's going to be a conversation is it's talking about leadership and leaders, right? Um, I personally feel like leaders are born, right? Like it's something within them. Do you feel like leaders can be made? I feel like leaders are made. Okay. You know, um, depending on how you grew up, it can turn you into a follower, mm. you know what I mean? Or it can turn you into a leader, right? I believe that great leaders go through different circumstances, right? And there are some people who have personalities that are more prone towards leadership, right? Right? It can be, you know, the... You know, where you land in your family, right? You're the fourth child or the fifth child, Right? You know, there's a way that your parents talk to you, right? It can be, you know, your environment to where you felt like you was the alpha, you right. know, in that environment that pushes you in that position, you know, to move things forward. There's a lot of reinforcing things that I think can, you know, breed a leader, okay. right? But I do believe that there are also some things that are innate within an individual, right, that can be brought out, right? Because there are people that probably was – have the leader gene, if you will, but mm -hmm. they circumstances turn them into a follower. Gotcha. Right? So I think that what makes it more special is that when a leader is made versus born, mm. right? Because then it's a choice. Okay. Right? I know people who I believe were born to lead because they have that ability to, but inside man is a duality. You know, there's a savior, right? And then there's the opposite of this savior. Right. And, you know, and philosophy is known as like the trickster. Okay. Right. This person who is as much a savior as they are manipulative. Mm -hmm. Right. And some people can't deal with the responsibility of leading others mm -hmm. because they think that it's going to expose the flaws within them. Mm -hmm. Right. So therefore they shut off that leadership and they self-sabotage. Right. And they say, fuck it. Yeah. And it's like, you can look at a lot of street dudes. They don't want to be role models. Right. they like, I don't want to be a role model because I don't want to stand up to what? The pressure. Yeah, but I say a lot of pressure. Right? It's the pressure of now I feel like I got to be perfect. And you don't have to be perfect to be a leader. Right. I'm not perfect. Right. You know? But I'm working to become whole. Right. Right? And wholeness is self-awareness, right? Is illuminating the inside of you and being aware of who you are and accepting who you are. And then walking with that mm -hmm. versus a person that has secrets about themselves that they're ashamed of. So they feel like I can't tell nobody nothing because there's parts of me that I haven't enlightened. Yet. Yeah. Well, with that being said, though, I feel like on the other spectrum of it. So let's say a leader is made. Right. A lot of times 
what's it called? Um, imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. They feel like they may not supposed to be there. All right. So how 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 does somebody deal with that? Because they may be more reserved type of individual, um, not the outspoken ones. Like some in, in sports, point guards may be more. I'm a lead by example, lead by my style of play, yeah. and not being vocal. But some people are more prone to accept leadership styles. When you are vocal, tell them what to do, stand up, be that forceful aspect. But if you're not really that aggressive type of leader, how do you kind of be a leader but still be, you know, uh, mellow, reserved, nonchalant? By example, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know about the mellow, nonchalantness. You feel me? I feel like you gotta, you gotta step out there. Like sometimes person needs soft love and they need tough love. You gotta be assertive, sometimes. right? It's like you got a soft ass coach yeah. that don't want to tell you to get in the game. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? You ain't doing good. Like no, nah, you need truth, right? Right? Like a a great leader speaks truth. Okay. Right, that's the key. But the way you deliver the truth, right, mm-hmm. is the way that people will receive it in a manner to where, because truth is light, mm-hmm. right? And if you are a light bearer and a light bringer, right, when you deliver that truth, you're giving a person eyes to see inside themselves and to see the world, right? And when you speak in truth, it's like you stand enough for God, mm-hmm. right? Because falsehood is basically... You know, that's the devil's world. Right. You understand me? But when you tell somebody about themselves and you don't care about the consequences, because the reason that people don't do it because of fear, right? right? You want to have a fearless leader. Okay. You don't want you you can't be a leader and a coward at the same time. Because you don't even have the courage to go through what's necessary to lead the people in direct. Mm-hmm. So you have direct leadership is by example and indirect leadership, which is trying to incentivize people to get things done. So that's considered to be direct manipulation or indirect manipulation. And manipulation is just finding a clever way to get things done. Mm. So you have to manipulate people to get them to do the right thing. Okay. Right? And even, you know, a person can say everything and finding a way to get people to, you know, execute their potential is a form of manipulation. Mm. Because if they're not doing it by themselves... Right. Right, then you have to figure out a way for you to spark that. Okay. Now, to lead by example is the highest form of inspiration. Okay. Right, to where I'm not motivated. I ain't telling you nothing. I'm doing it myself. You see the light in right. me. It exposes what's in you, and now you want to bring that out as well. Mm-hmm. I feel that since we're like our audience is entrepreneurs, and you're in the business world too. Let's talk about leadership without capital, though. Mm. Right. So like broke leadership. <laughs> Basically, like you got the vision, but you don't have the capital to pay the people to help you execute it or to like even incentivize them to follow you on mm-hmm. this path because you can't you can't pay them. Let's be honest. People got bills to pay. They got families to feed. You may have a great vision, great leadership style, but if you don't have no capital, should you just focus on yourself, do it by yourself till you can afford to get them to afford to build a team? Or like What's your advice on that aspect? That's what I see a lot from entrepreneurs starting off who like, man, I see the vision, I see the passion, and I know, you know, with the great team, you can make it work, but you can't afford to even put that in place. Yeah, I mean, you know, what is money, right? Uh, money is energy, right? It's a measurement. It's a measuring unit of energy, right? Um, and energy is the measurement of all electrical activity on the planet Earth. You understand me? So when you're talking about Capital, right? There are things that can replace money, right? Okay. Malcolm X didn't have no money, mm-hmm. right? Martin Luther King, I believe he gave up his check. You understand me? And he probably realized he messed up. I think. <laughs> like, why, the, why did I give up yeah. that check? Yeah, I need he that. felt like he got tricked, yeah, you know? That. But if you go look at most leaders throughout the past, they didn't have no paper. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Like the, the, the poor righteous teacher is speaking how you can't use the world, right, to get that financial gain or you can't depend on the world more so. The world not going to help you with your mission, right? So you have to figure out a way to get that on your own. But that capital can be brought in a level of intellect and brilliance and passion. A person to follow a passionate leader that they believe is real, uh, that person to follow a fearless leader that they believe is courageous and brave. You understand me? A people will follow a leader that they respect so, you know, your principles are your first level of capital. Okay. You understand me? Because that's why a person will follow you. Okay. You understand? Know your intellect can be your capital. This person is so smart. I will, f- I will work for you for free because I believe in you. Right. Right? Confidence is a level of capital. Mm-hmm. Right? Because that's what you're going to use to get money anyway. Exactly. Now, in this day and age, there's no reason for a person to be broke. Right? Because that means that you can't tell me you're a god. 
and you don't know how to get a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. right? There's so many ways to make money today. You know, you can't say that you are a light bearer and a light bringer, yet you ain't got no work and you ain't got no motion, right? Today is about the time of execution. For sure. So you got to show me today, mm -hmm. right? I don't like, there's no point of just listening to somebody because, you know, you believe they have a great body of knowledge because now we have suites of tools that we can execute on that knowledge to prove it. Right. Right. We are a generation who has more information than ever. Right. Right. But we need more execution than ever. Man. That's what we miss it. So, you know, broke leaders have something broken within them that they're not really executing. Okay. Right. You may be spending time trying to figure out how to, you know, probe in behind the veil of, you know, what the devil is doing. Right. But the devil ain't got to look at what you're doing because you're not doing nothing. Not doing nothing. Right. Besides looking at what he's doing. So for me, it's about architecting and building and blueprinting things out. Right. Because this generation ain't going to be able to eat off just knowledge. Nah, for sure. Right? You got to go out there, relationship build. You got to execute. You got to be able to build a blueprint. You got to be able to have a strategy and then see it through. You feel me? I, you can't be a, 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 a soldier for a general that don't have no provisions and resources. Nah, that's I'll be able to feed the army. That's real. I can't remember what movie it was, but they were like, shorty can't eat no books. Oh. <laughs> but let's talk about like you have a wealth of knowledge, right? And for people who want to accumulate that knowledge, like have you always been somebody who's, who who sought out knowledge and seek to have information? Because people have information, but just like you said, they may not execute. But I feel like you're somebody who's well versed in many different subjects and many different verticals. Like, how does somebody get there? I have moments in my life where I'm like, man, I want to educate myself more on where I'm from, which is the country of Panama, mm -hmm. right? But then I also have a company to run, a family to feed, a team to build. So like, how do you? accumulate all this knowledge, implement this knowledge in your work, and then also still maintain the path that you're going on? I mean, I don't think that because you run in a business, you have all these other things as a reason why you can't learn. I just think it's a lack of passion towards it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Um, because those other things, you know, we prioritize things we're passionate about, right? We actually have a lot of time throughout the day because it's the in-between time. Yeah. You feel me? And then we have a lot of tools that make it, convenient to learn these days, right? You can listen to, I listen to a lot of books, right? I might watch documentaries. I might read a book, right? There's different forms of learning. I might ask somebody who knows and then they can share that information. So if I have a true passion for it, I'm going to find a way to get it. So me, I have a passion towards learning, okay. right? I have a passion towards enlightening my mind and, you know, constant study because, you know, I'm on a path of constant elevation, for sure. right? Right. You know, you can tell who are the ones by the ones that are constantly progressing. Now, you can learn through experience, of course, right? right? But experience is a teacher that's compound based on your own actions. Right. But if you learn from others, right, then you can go to, you can learn from things that you haven't even done yet mm -hmm. to not do and what to do, right? So your experience can be a slow teacher depending on what your actions are. Instead, if you learn from somebody who already been there, you can now do the right thing the first time, right? right? And then compound on top of that. And then there's just certain things that you will never experience, so you have to learn from others if you ever want to. There's not enough experience in the world that's just going to automatically drop the history of Panama in your head. Right. <laughs> nah, for sure. No matter what you do, no matter how much money you get, right. until you, you know, may you get rich enough and you just hire somebody to walk around and just drop facts on you. Nah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? Just teach me and mentor me as I go. But other than that, man, everybody can make some time. Yeah. You take your schedule and wake up an hour earlier. That's time. Yeah. I went you know the old-fashioned world. I mean, I went out to Panama for a month. Yeah. Just got embedded in the culture. And add, yeah. like you said, kind of ask people, like talk to the community, talk to the culture. But I think that just goes to the mentality that we have now. Like, if if you want to keep a culture from progressing or people from being in the state of enlightenment, keep them busy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They never actually have time for enlightenment and progress and power. Keep them busy. Like, keep the parents busy, right? while the child is so called being raised through their most formative years, right? So now they don't even, the, the, the parent doesn't even have enough downtime to even think creatively in ways or ways to be even aware of the depth of that child to bring out what's special in them. They don't even have the time. Mm -hmm. School is not meant to do that, so that means nobody's going to do that unless that child has a natural ability, right, to want to bring that out in themselves, mm -hmm. right? So otherwise, you know, the children suffer because of that. And society suffers because we don't actually have time. Mm -hmm. And time is the wealth, right. right? So for me, 
I learn to find that time because it's there. It will exist. And when I find myself too busy, I'm saying, what am I doing it for if I don't have time? Right, right. So what do you think, what do you feel like the purpose of school is? Then? Well, the purpose of, you know, the, the current education yeah. system yeah. is to, 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 to form people into becoming workers for this industrial society. Right? When you go back to the early 1500s, 16, 1800s, whatever it was, when the early food industry started building factories, right? right? And they started hiring people in those factories, they needed workers. Right. Then when these factories become more complicated, they need more skilled workers, right? right? When they have money to be able to lobby, right, politicians, then they can help decide the curriculum so that these workers right. can come out and work inside their factories. Right. Corporations build up, they lobby the same. The education system is not made. Nowhere near to pull out the genius in a child. It is 100% completely so that that child can go work for somebody else who owns a corporation. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when you look at the current education climate and you wonder why people don't know how to learn, people don't right. know how to think for self, mm -hmm. people don't have the, the standard skills and even know what America is, right? There's so much that we don't know about America and industry. It makes no sense that you go to history class Right, but they don't even teach you the nuances of how mm. the world around you was built. Definitely. The average person can't tell you how Heinz was started, but if you study that, then you start studying the true history of America. They can't tell you how Coca Cola was started. You know, it was a little Coke in the Coca Cola yeah. back in the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they don't know who Dr. Pemberton is. But when you study the way America was built out, like studying even the food industry is, is a very interesting thing because it shaped America. Mm. You understand me? But it's like, why don't they tell us that? Because they're not trying to get you to become one of those type of people. Mm. They don't want you to think about changing the world. That's not what we, there's a specific schools that are made for that. Right. And the elites and their children there. Right. There's Ivy League schools for that. For but low education schools that's in our neighborhoods and zip codes, they're not made for that. You're made to be a worker, not a world changer. Mm. So how do we unlearn what we've been taught? And then how do we pass that down to the next generation? Teach yourself and teach your children. This school system is messed up with all kind of weird agendas, over-sexualizing children, under-educating them, right? And trying to lead this generation into shamelessness mm -hmm. to where you can do whatever you want, just have no shame about it. Mm -hmm. That's not empowering, mm -hmm. right? So they learn how to take psychology and instead of using it in a way to manipulate the mind to be at this highest level of power and empowerment, they do the opposite. Mm -hmm. They take your power away. They make all these little kids insecure, sad, anxiety, depression, suicide. These rates are very high and technology sure. is constantly shifting. But why come technology is not being used to improve the mind, right? It's being used to what? Use the mind and drain it of its resources. And so teaching ourselves is number one. Sure. Self-education is key. If you are a parent, you have to, like, there should be nobody should have a child unless you're intelligent. Like, we got to stop, <laughs> like, for real, like... Uh -huh. Because your parent is your first teacher. Uh -huh. How are you going to teach your child if you don't know nothing? Mm -hmm. So you mad at them for not getting good grades in school, but you don't even know the, the shit that they learning. Definitely don't. You can't pass none of it. Can't you understand me? It. And you can't even tell their child why that education is important to reality. Right. Right? So if you have a child, you should have to have a certain level of IQ. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that to me is like a real thing. Like, unfortunately, women look to see how much a man has. Right. right, A man looks at how pretty she is and what she could do for him, but what is her intelligence level? What's her, what's, like, what does she know? What can she teach my child? What does he know? Right, right? Where is his principle? Because those principles will be instilled into that child. So when we go out and we make for the wrong reasons, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that, you know, they didn't teach us the science of mating, mm -hmm. right? You got to understand, family, like, epigenetics is real. Like, the family history you understand me, is embedded in that child. That's who they become, right? right? And so, you know, people are not, you know, um, picking their children in and picking their mate in a way where they're designing a family for betterment, right? Instead, you know, we go after our lustful desires. You know what I mean? The ass is fat, you want that. Yeah. You feel me? You don't care if the brain fat too. Mm. But you got, you got a point. You do got a point. I'm sure a lot of us are guilty. It's something that, you know, we have to unlearn. But I'm saying that's her that's her DNA. So if, yeah. if your woman is dumb and your, your your child end up being dumb in school, how you going to blame them? You really can't. You just got to correct them. 
Right. And then the nigga you pick, he got money, but it, is he intelligent in any other facets? Mm. So now the child supposed to be smarter than both of y'all? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't do this work. So you telling me I need to be smarter than both of y'all in this curriculum. My memory skills need to be higher than y'all. My problem solving skills need to be mm. higher than y'all. Like, wait a minute, can you do this? The right. child should be able to take it back to the parents and be like, can you do this? Well, if you can't do this and you consider yourself to be successful and an adult, why do I need to do this then? Nah, and these children got AI now, so they don't give a damn what these parents don't know. They're going to learn on their own. Yeah. I definitely want to make sure people fact check, though, because I've done some stuff on AI and it was completely wrong. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's there's Google have always been wrong. Yeah. The news is wrong. Nah, definitely. But that's why you have to have a certain standard level of intelligence. It works sure. better if you're already smart. Exactly. Right? I already it's have a like, on it. You can take AI and in the future it's going to be personalized tutors. So now, you know, only the rich can have personalized education, right? Mm -hmm. It used to be like that before segregation. The teacher would, because it was smaller class size, they would know every child and they would go to that child's door, check up on that child. That, that relationship dynamic don't exist. These, mm -hmm. The, the class sizes are too large. The For teachers sure. are underpaid and overworked, right? And so they don't have that same relationship with your child to be able to singularly focus on them and bring out what's in them. Instead, your child has to follow along the same path as all the other kids in school based on age, not based on intelligence. Mm -hmm. So when we create age as, oh, this age, you should be in a third grade. This age, you should be in the fourth. No, it should be based on your intellect. Right. So we already have a society that is controlling you right from the beginning. Like you're dictating where I should be based on my age, not based on who I am. Right. You understand me? Like there's no reason. I sh and, and then unless that child passes these certain IQ tests, yes. which are culturally biased. Right. Right. Which don't really mark the true level of IQ. And then they've done studies that if this child is growing up in an anxiety, stress-filled environment, then our IQ test will be off as well. The same as these damn tests that children are taking in high schools. If you're having stress in the household, your parents are broke or they're going through domestic disputes or right. you're going through issues, that's going to decrease your ability to focus when you're taking a test. For sure. So it ain't that this child is not smart. Look at their home environment. Right. right? There's so many markers that we don't factor in Right, even though we are a generation of subversion, like it's a generation of no morals. It's a generation that has been affected and impacted by the wars that's been going on that we have, you know, unfortunately been a part of. Right. And so people look at the way men and women are today, look at what made them that way by right. studying the past. Cause they are just a byproduct of what happened before them. What they went through. Yeah. And uh, that brings up a point you talk a lot about core values. Like, what are your five core values? Mm. Um, respect, honor, family, you know, um, shit, power is a value to me. Um, man, there's so many of them. Integrity, integrity, you know, integrity is top on the list. You know, I gotta have integrity, For speaking sure. truth, you know, that's that's a value to me. Truth is a value, you know, but I can keep going, but you know, when you talk about them core values. The question is, you know, what is the culture's core values? Mm. You know, if if I'm sure you can go study that Jewish community real quick and figure out what their core values is, right? Right? White people don't even really have core values anymore because patriotism is lost, right? Look where we at: Donald Trump getting arrested, For sure. Joe Biden getting investigated, right? You got to pick between two geriatrics, <laughs> right? And one that is, and, and when you you're looking at the current climate of America. You know, they're pushing all of these different agendas and it's causing people to fight and go to war with each other, right. right? And they're deciding what your children should learn or shouldn't learn, right? And unfortunately, the values of black men and women are on the line right now, okay. right? And this is why you have a lot of in-house fighting. We still attracted to each other. You still love a black yeah. woman. You still, well, I would say lust a black woman, but the core values are different because... She is more progressive in these days, which means that some of the agendas of the world she agrees with. Right. While the man, like, I don't agree with that weirdo stuff. Right. You know what I mean? So that's an automatic separation. So when y'all have conversation, her mind has been so integrated with these ideas and indoctrinated with these ideas, it's hard for you to respect her. Mm. Right? And then the past history, right? And black men have the worst statistics out of any group, right? Okay. We are high on all the list. But there is no agenda 
to assist the black man because there's no empathy for men, period. Right. There's a demasculation and not just for black men, for all colors of men. Right. Right. And this is a fight that we're seeing as a war right now. So it's like, if you want to change America, right, and you have to raise black men up okay. because we have it worse. Right. So what happens when black men aren't stressed out? Okay. Testosterone levels rise. Right. Because stress decreases your testosterone level, which makes you not want to compete. Right. Okay. Which makes you less willfulness, which decreases your intelligence. Okay. Right. And, you know, they attack us through all sort of mediums in different ways. But it's like, you know, we are a generation that now has the responsibility of cleaning up everything that happened before us, including yeah. our own traumas. Right. When they say, I was always taught behind every no good woman, there's a man. And I believe that that's true, right? Somewhere. Nowadays, you know, you got lesbian activity, so there's a woman now behind you as well. There's a lot of toxic lesbians. Yeah. So it ain't just men, right? Because they choosing women. So they got stories. Go ask the yeah. lesbians. They got horror stories yeah. with lesbian women sure. not treating them right. But to that point, what I was saying, uh, <laughs> that was true. something new I just thought. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's real, though. That's true. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, now I'm saying that is behind no good black men, there's a man behind them as well. Yeah. Right? There's somebody behind them, whether it was a man or a toxic woman or whoever it was, they act like men are just coming out the womb toxic. Like, what is his story? For sure. Right? Yeah. What happened yeah. in his life that... Now he's not psychologically whole. They right now he's not mature. Now now he has shadow things that he has to deal with. There's no empathy. There's not even a diagnosis. It's just you wrong, you toxic, you ain't shit. Wait a minute, wait. Yeah, hold on. When that's when a woman, you look at her history, was she abused? How did people treat her? See what you're saying. Or was the family life? Her father wasn't there. You actually start diagnosing because you got empathy. But when it comes to the black man, you act like this generation of men are the one who created the world that we live in. So you can't blame me for no history of patriarchy, right. especially because you can't show me in America where we dictated the terms of patriarchy in America, right? So when a person spews that, that's misandry, that's hatred towards men, and it lacks empathy because it's like, wait a minute, where's my privilege if we have the worst statistics out of all groups in America? So I don't want to hear that shit. And I also don't want to hear the privilege about other people's sexual rights before we still have, haven't got our human rights. You can't get me to empathize with another group if my group is suffering the worst. We got the highest level of mental illnesses. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we have the highest level of gun violence and suicide rates and depression and anxiety and cancer. You, people never talk about black men yeah, and cancer. cancer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we got the highest rates. Why is that? So it's like, no, nah, there's no empathy over here. So when you see a young bro messed up in the mind, I know where that comes from. We can go look at an extensive history. Right? It's an effect. He's a byproduct of the reality of America. He didn't start that as first right. generational trauma. No, this is epigenetic trauma. But women are gonna say black women have it the worst because they're double minorities. They're gonna say they're a black and they're a woman. So it's like, I see, I definitely see. I see mean, I, a, a man can say that too. I'm black and I'm a man. Who is the yeah. greatest target in America? It ain't Not the black. black woman, it's the black yeah. man. I'm black, I'm a man, I'm masculine, and I'm Muslim. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got quadruple targets on yeah. my back. And I speak truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got that kind of target. Being a man is a target. They don't want men to be men no more. Not they sure. look at masculinity as toxic, right? Sure. So, you know, men have always been the most targeted. We die by gun violence at the highest rate. We are filling up the prisons, right? That's not to say that black women don't have their struggle and right. things that they go through, right? And that the fear is real from being a woman, and especially with how these men are today. They're not men, they boys. Right. So, yeah, they got it even worse because they don't have the dating pool. They don't have men that protect them no more because these men don't feel like they can protect themselves. Yeah, you understand me? They sissy boys, suckers, and soy boys. <laughs> so I get it. But you got to understand that on the flip side, right, I'm not discounting that women do have the double minority, 100,000%, but black men do. Right. I'm not saying all men. So right. And the problem comes is when you got this, these women's groups and black women – and you got like white women start to say that oh, I'm a minority. <laughs> nah. Man, you birthed every psycho terrorist in America. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear none of that. No, nah, 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 this is a good conversation, man. We know you got to show. So I'm going to ask you a couple more questions to give you some time to relax before. Uh, we're called Cosign Magazine, right? So Cosign stands for approval. It's like the vouch, right? Do you believe 
that the power of a cosign matters when it comes to like social economics, social like as far as people in business, uh, thought leaders, et cetera. And what's the power of a cosign? What's your what's your thought process on the power of a cosign and how it can entail like how it could work for somebody like you? It depends, right? Like when it comes to relationships, who introduce you matters. Right. Right? Like that that changes the value of the relationship completely because you take on the respect that I have for the person that introduced you. Right? Some people they can introduce you to just anybody. Right. You know what? Hey, nice to meet you, bro. But, um, you, know what I'm you could be anybody. Right. But there's certain people, you know what? I know if bro introduced me, yeah, he I know you real because they go vet and they gonna make sure they only bring valuable people to me. That's their reputation. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, but at the same time, you know, you gotta co-sign yourself first. Right. You know what I'm saying? Through your reputation and through your actions and consistency. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you know. When you are consistent with something, that is a cosign. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bruh been doing this for years. He's solid. He moved with integrity. That is who he is. Mm -hmm. Right? The world can't take away your reputation. They can't take away your results. Right? right? Like, I've been doing this. Y'all may not have seen this. And this is why a lot of people get frustrated because the world don't cosign the real. They cosign the popular. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, unfortunately, the cosign only means so much when the world is not reactive to the realest people because they're afraid of that because they know that you get in the room and you go change it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so when you're trying to maintain a status quo, then you're not going to be co-signing the realest people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to co-sign people that you can control. Mm. Who's, right? who's co-signing be the most to you? Shit, God. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what protects me. That's who I give it up to. You know, like, I feel protected when I move throughout the world because I feel like I'm moving in a way that God want me to move. Yeah. And I fear him. I don't fear no man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I, it ain't a cosign that's necessary if I got gods, right? Because I'll be waiting for something that may never happen. Mm. You feel me? So if you ain't cosign me yet, the cosign don't matter. So I rock with God because this is how I'm able to, you know, get things done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I live like that in real life. Like there's certain dreams, goals, and visions I want to have done. And God, my cosigner on those. Right. You feel me? He gave me that credit. Like, bro, his credit good. He good. I know he good for it. Yeah. You feel me? Same way you got a co-signer on a rent application. Exactly. They basically saying, I, I rock with the anything happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. It fall back on me. If something don't go right with keys, damn, what's going on with God? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, you took a day off today, man. <laughs> you trying to teach him a lesson or something. That's my co-sign, man. Yeah, nah, no, it was me. It was me. I was, <laughs> I was tripping. It wasn't God. I wasn't doing my part. Yeah, I wasn't doing right. But uh, yeah. we got this, this part called Co-Sign Confessions, right? Basically what that means is I want you, if you don't mind, to confess a, a time in your life to where you face adversity and it was like hard for you to kind of get through it and how you got through it. Oh, Cause you know, man, we, we, that's a lot. we shit, glamorize shit. all the wins yeah. on social media. I remember, um, man, so many, I done been through a lot of traumas and experiences. <laughs> what comes but to mind first? What comes to mind is, is something I was going to talk about today is, um, I just remember a time where I ain't gonna say specifically what family members, okay. but a, a lot of family members was doing like crack in front of me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I had to live with them at this time. And it was a time when we was goddamn broke as hell. But I still had to go to school every single day. And, you know, uh, uh, normally socialize. Like, everything good. I mean, we were so broke that we had to go steal out of grocery stores just to eat on a daily basis. Like, it was that bad. It was a dark time in life. Yeah. You feel me? So, now when I think about those particular type of times, you know, a lot of things can't get me down. You feel me? That was something. That's something that I normally don't even share because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't really glorify, you know, my street background. I don't glorify, you know, none of those things because that's not who I am. That's what I went through. Right. You understand me? And those are the things I had to heal from because those things are detrimental, especially to a teenager. You know, it forces you to grow up much faster, you know, than you probably wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then during that time, it forces me to become a little more angry, you know, and that anger came from insecurity. Right. And I feel like I became more of a bully during that era of life. You know what I mean? I got into the streets a lot more. You feel me? Because your morals become corrupted when you got to steal to eat. You understand me? It changes your sense of survival. Right. And so getting back to myself, just was getting back to Islam, you know what I mean? Getting back to knowledge yourself, remind, reminding myself who I am, like that was survival mode, but that's not me. Mm. Right. And so when jumping out of survival mode, it's saying that I can rest now. 
You know what I mean? I can be relaxed. I can be calm. I'm in a state of peace. I don't have to do those things that I did when I was in survival mode. And then I had to learn to forgive those people that put me in that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because at that time, that was an environment that I was put in. It wasn't one that I wanted to be in. Wow. You feel me? And, um, yeah, man, that's a situation that was, you know, uh, one of the darkest phases of my life. It came up out of it stronger. Oh, a hundred thousand percent. Yeah, we handle that. Nah, definitely, definitely, man. Last question, man. I know you're a global thought leader, educator, entrepreneur, but who was really nineteen keys, right? We know you know you got um got the water, which we really get to talk about, but I want you to talk about that too real quick. Mm -hmm. Um but like if somebody had to really ask who nineteen key was, how would you describe yourself? A young God, man. You know, I'm a creator, man. You know, I'm actually, if if, if you get to know me, I'm probably one of the funniest person <laughs> next to Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I can you see it. I mean, somewhere like that. I can see it. Um, but yeah, man, I'll be, I, I really be relaxed with life, but I'm a very passionate person. I'm an artist. I'm a creator. I'm a designer. You know, I'm a, I'm a world traveler. I'm very inquisitive and curious about life. I'm a natural philosopher. I'm an intellectual. I'm a son. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm a brother. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a good friend. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm a confidant. You feel me? Like all of these things are my makeup of who I am. You know what I'm saying? I got a, a very good personality. You know what I mean? I, I know how to deal and handle with people. I wear many different crowns. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I'm also, I'm a lover of life. I enjoy, I enjoy learning. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like that's, I think that's one of my key things that I have above other people a lot. It's like, I really enjoy the process of learning. I don't mind being bored. While other people needs to be constantly stimulated, I will sit there and watch boring information, right? Right, And find that entertainment because I know what I'm going to get from it and what it's going to do for me, which has increased my value. Mm, that's real. And we go, we can't leave without you sharing at least one advice, one piece of gym to kind of help people get through, you know, adversity and, and gain some type of success in whatever industry vertical they're going for. So if somebody sat down with you right now, somebody and said, they're like, man, how can I be successful in X, Y, and Z? What would you tell them overall? Success is a, is a customizable thing to each person, right? But to me, success is about being able to take the thoughts out your head and bring them in reality and take care of those thoughts, right? Be a good steward of those thoughts, right? How can a man prove he is a man if his mind doesn't work, mm. right? When you say you broke, you're saying you're broke in. Right, which means it's not working, right? What is not working? You don't know how to think, you don't know how to execute, right? And so for me, it's about being a man that knows how to go step by step, right? Same thing with women, right? There's a lot of intelligent, beautiful women on this planet Earth, especially with the movements that we see now. Women are really finding, you know, what's special about them beyond their looks, right? As they go out and execute. And you know, you have to be able to be a principal man and you got to be able to heal through the world. And when I mean that, I mean that a lot of people think that they're successful, but inside they dying, right? So regardless of what you do, true success is being able to maintain your integrity and your principles, right? Your values, your morals, you know, being able to say, I'm at peace, I'm happy, I'm mm -hmm. joyful, right? If you can't do that, you can't tell me you're successful regardless of how much money you have, right? It's your connection to God that makes you successful, right? How much do you feel like you're making God proud with your daily actions, right? And then it's saying that, you know, I don't just study and learn. I'm a man of vision, which gives you direction, and you take that direction and you execute it, and you leave some sort of legacy onto this world, you understand me? So I'm a man that I have a thought. I'm going I'm to organize it, I'm going to execute it, I'm going to network, I'm going to build around it, I'm going to make sure it don't just stay in my head and I procrastinate and I'm lazy. Like, nah, I got to leave my blueprint on the world and I'm going to do it at a level where I'm aggressive with it. Mm. You feel me? You got to be 100% confident in the things you do. I don't need nobody to validate nor cosign my confidence. You feel me? To me, confidence is common sense. Man, that's real. We got to end on that perfect note, man. We're here with the God, the King, 19 Key. This is an exclusive cosign cover story. Make sure y'all go get that when it drops. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope y'all drop some gems. Whatever y'all did get, put in the comments so we can, you know what I'm saying, share that as well on social media. Man, thanks for your time, brother. Appreciate y'all having man, me, man. I'm glad to be yeah. here. Can't wait to sit in the stands and tune in and tap in. I make sure y'all follow 19 Keys on Instagram. We out.